Welcome to episode 20 of the Oxfit podcast. Beefy and Big Ox in the studio. Do you know something crazy about episode 20? Actually, I think it's episode 21. Um, I don't know if I've said this before, but if you make 21 episodes of a podcast, you're in the 1% of podcasters ever made. I think you've said that before. You have, it's 21. Isn't that crazy? 21. Yeah. So we got one more and then we're in the 1%. So how many people do you know that were like, I'm going to start a podcast and then they do three episodes, two episodes, some people one episode and then that's it. It's gone. I only know us doing a podcast. Okay. Well, so. I've started two different podcasts that way. <laughs> and I know quite a few people that are like, you should start a podcast and then nobody listens to it. So they just stop. But yeah, the key is being consistent. And then once you're consistent, you get an audience that eventually start watching your stuff, you know, but that takes a hundred episodes. Yeah. So if most people quit at five or six and then only 1% get to 20, it just shows you how easy it is to win. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. If most people will quit, then then if you just keep going, you're eventually going to win. Well, that's because so many people are interested in instant gratification. If people aren't watching their reels or watching their videos right now. Right. They feel like a failure. So they're not going to do it anymore. But yeah. people are just too afraid to fail mm. instead of try something new. Well, it leads. In, I mean, we could probably jump ahead to that because it kind of leads in perfectly to New Year's resolutions. Oh, yeah. Right. My least but also favorite time of the year only because you know people are always like oh what are your new year's resolutions what are your new year's resolutions well i would rather not tell you what my new year's resolutions are because if i tell you then what is i forget was it you or savannah that said it's like don't tell people yeah. your new year's resolutions you're going to get that instant rush of dopamine and you're going to already feel like you've accomplished what you said you were going to do and then you yeah. don't set out to actually it's like do doing it. a to-do list it feels good to write a to-do list yes but some people just write to-do lists every week and it's the same to-do list <laughs> every week and you get that feeling good on a sunday yeah this is what i'm going to do this week and then don't do it and then just keep getting the dopamine rush of oh this is what i could do mm -hmm. and so it says yeah that 20 percent of 23 percent of people quit after the first week of their resolutions and then 43 percent quit after the first month which is why having a challenge and sign up for something that's more than 30 days or more than a week or sign up for something that's about 100 days, which is why we do our 100 day challenge, mm -hmm. commits you to three months of something. After three months of something, it becomes a habit, becomes a routine, becomes something you enjoy. And so we've done 30 day challenges. We've done all kinds of four weeks, three weeks, six weeks, whatever. But the one that's had the most impact is when people do commit to a longer time. Like when someone comes in to try the gym <clears throat> and they're like, I've tried this, I've tried that. I always go, if you really want to get to this place that you've suggested as a goal, don't sign up for one month. Mm -hmm. Even though that's kind of the only option. Pay us now for three months because you're committing to that now. Yeah. And that'll make you do that thing. Well, that's why people are always like, man, you're, you know, Oxfit is, you know, they're like, oh, it's a little out of my budget. But at the same time, people will sign up for these other gyms. You know, they're charging 10 or $20 a month. After a week, a week or so, you're just like, eh, yeah. it's 10 or 20 bucks. I don't really need to go or they just won't cancel it or mm -hmm. they'll go here and there. There's no skin in the game. Yeah. There's no actual, you're like, dang, I paid for this. I got to go. Mm. I've got to do this. Yeah. But like you said, I mean, we've talked about it before in a previous podcast, Savannah and I, about how long it takes to build a habit. And really in the grand scheme of things, it's not just about time or how, how long it takes. It's doing something every single day. And when you have someone or a group, like in our Ox 100 group mm -hmm. challenge to hold you accountable, you're able to perform or do it every single day. And then that habit just eventually becomes how second nature. How long does nature. it take? So reading up on it, it could say, I've read it takes about 66 days okay. to build a habit. A yeah. habit. But what when I've read further into it, it really isn't about time. It's about reps. It's about doing it over and over and over again. So something could come sooner. It could come in 30 days. Uh, but when you think about it, that could be someone doing something every other day. So mm. then maybe it does take the full 66 days or it takes a few months. 
but building that habit and working towards something, you'll get there. Yeah. Well, when this comes out, it'll be the new year. Mm -hmm. So it'll be 2024. Can't believe it. So happy new year. Happy new year. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this year. I'm pumped. Um, and yeah, I think it's our maybe third year of doing Ox 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leo's three. Yeah. So I'm going to say it's the third year since we started Ox 100. And um, yeah, you said you wanted to know where it started and why mm -hmm. it started. And it was during the pandemic. Um, nothing was really going on. So me and Lucas signed up for a bodybuilding competition <laughs> and um, we figured it was, was the one thing that would probably still happen, right? Because you're on a stage, you're on your own mm -hmm. potentially. So, and it just, we didn't really want to do that. It just gave us a focus because like this year right now, we're thinking about what we want to do in 2024 and we've got like a thousand goals, right. right? So it makes it really easy because now your training's focused on oh, I want to go to this competition here. I want to do this triathlon here. I want to, so now getting in the gym is easy because you've got all these things. But we had no events were happening. So we were like, we need something. And um, so we did that. And then we'd always done a nutrition challenge. I'd just done one, which was called 75 Hard. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. And um, I, liked, I liked the way it worked. I liked everything about it. The thing that I didn't like was just it gave me – a bunch of really healthy habits mm -hmm. that are great, but they just weren't mine. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do with the 100 day challenge was personalize it to somebody. So let's try all these different things. And instead at the end of 75 days, you've got these bunch of habits that are good, but they're not yours. Mm -hmm. And most people will after 75 days, stop, take a break, then do it again. What I want you to get at the end of 100 days is habits that work for you that you just maintain the rest of your, you know, life or year or whatever it is. Right. They get you to the next goal. Yeah. And so that's where it came from. That's where the 100 days came from was in each block, we can try new habits. You can get rid of some, you can add some. And for me, I thought that separated from other programs in terms of just giving you your own program that you can walk away with at the end of 100 days mm -hmm. and you want to keep them habits going. It's not like someone's going to be like, why do you drink a gallon of water every day? And you just go, I don't know it was in the challenge. Yeah, <laughs> You've established your own habits over this 100 days that you like. Why are you journaling every day? Because I found that one over meditation, over all these things that we presented with had the biggest impact on my life. So I'm going to keep that one. Why are you eating animal-based? Well, I tried this way and I saw the impact and it affected me this way. Or I didn't like that, so I switched back to a paleo or I switched back to whatever it is you found your way. So it's not just, well, Ant told me to eat like this. He told me to follow this plan. He told me to, you know, journal. He told, so I just do that now. No, it's like these things, I've tested them for a week, loved them, kept them. And so that's what I think separates it. It's like we say 100 days to 100% because it's 100% you, not just 100% of what someone else suggests you should be doing. And I think it's one of the things that I'm most proud of that we've had an effect on so many people. Like you see people even today that have stuck with these things, you know, religiously right. for two, three years now. And the compound and effect of that is just incredible. Well, if you look at our... I mean, our little logo that we have for Oxfit Nutrition, it says change your habits, change your life. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, you know, I've seen the layout of the 75 hard and it's like, do this, do this, do this. But it's not teaching you long term sustainability. Yeah. And what it's doing is it's like, OK, you're going to do all these things. You're going to have this result at the end of the 75 days. But then you get to the end and you're like, OK, where do I go from here? Right. And the beauty of it is it teaches you to do hard things. So mm -hmm. now you've got, oh, I can do these hard things for 75 days. So great. What next? But the way ours is set up is the 100 days, you'll just keep going. Right. And you just add more things to it. You won't be like, oh, now let me do what I want to do. Because then you'll switch back to things that just don't work. So Yeah. And that's what makes Ox 100 such a great you know, step in the right direction of your nutrition. It's a group challenge. You're around driven and like-minded individuals, but it's still individualized for you because what, what works for you, Ant, 
doesn't work for me and what's going to work for me isn't going to work for anybody else in the challenge. But that's what we do. Over the 100 days, we figure out exactly what works for you. It's like you said, maybe you try animal-based. Maybe you try paleo. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you've gained all of this knowledge that you can keep going from there. Yeah. And so you have the sustainability, you have the flexibility. Yeah. But so, and you're not just stuck. Yeah, that's it. At like, the end. You, you're signing up for a group challenge, mm -hmm. but at the end, you can have a personalized program. And like, you're not necessarily going to work with somebody one on one every week, mm -hmm. which I don't want to do. I, I <laughs> want to have some freedom to choose in there, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to be held accountable. And then you're going to leave with something that works personally for you. Like you said, all these other group programs, you'll leave with somebody else's idea how you should live. Right. At the end of this, we're going to make suggestions. We're going to add things in. We're going to take things away. You'll decide which ones work. Mm -hmm. And I've had, so I'm a big proponent of animal based. I'm a big proponent of eating a lot of protein, but mm -hmm. I've had men that don't want to do that. So we figure out what works in their life for them. Yeah. You know, so like, that's what I love about it is, and I think it's important, like I work with the men, you work with the women. Yes. I've tried both, but I know that these challenges, when men come into these things, as soon as we flip their hormones, they get instant changes. Mm -hmm. And when women do it, it takes a little bit longer. Yeah. So to have them grouped together was just like, these dudes lost 20 pounds in the first couple of weeks from change, from stopping drinking beer and mm -hmm. from stopping whatever it was, like just being addicted to sugar. And then- their hormones turn on, their testosterone kicks in and they start losing weight. Whereas the women, that can take a while. Oh yeah, and that's one thing that I love that we do in Ox 100. You're learning about your body mm -hmm. and we're figuring out your hormones because hormones are such a major factor for a woman's nutrition and fitness because we're not like men. We're not just being pumped full of testosterone once that turns on. We can do some body weight work, cut out this and we're got those abs, we're feeling great. Yeah. You know, we also have that mentality as women that we're supposed to be small. Mm. We're supposed to shrink ourselves. We need to be skinny. And being skinny does not mean you're healthy. Yeah. And so we have to work together as women to change that mentality, to change it around. Because they're so focused on, I need to lose weight. I need to be little. Right. But then once Well, sometimes we... you can gain weight yeah. in the first couple of months <laughs> if you haven't lifted weights and you mm -hmm. haven't eaten like this because you're going to start adding muscle. Yeah. So you need to have somebody that can see, well, your body's changing. Your waist is coming in. Your butt's looking tighter. Your abs mm -hmm. are looking good. You've gained a little weight because you've added muscle. Yeah. And like that conversation is really important. And that, you know, like watching men lose 20 pounds when women might have gained two pounds, but they have completely changed their body composition, you know? So that's why we separate them out because you just see different results mm -hmm. and like, the women can get together and talk about these things. And like, we all want to be toned, which is a mm -hmm. bullshit word <laughs> that was created by the fitness industry. Right. When really the only way to do that is to add muscle and to lose mm -hmm. fat. I There's know. no toned. So you can only add muscle and lose fat. So all these high intensity cardio workouts that just burn and don't do anything, you're not adding any muscle. No. It just burned for a minute. When you go get your heart rate up, but you don't know why you're doing it, you're not getting stronger, you're not gaining muscle. You're not, you might be burning some calories, but you're not getting toned. Oh, you're yeah. just sweating. Whereas what we do, you're lifting heavy weights, you're getting stronger. Mm -hmm. You're burning all this calories and all this fat, you're losing weight. So you're getting that toned, which is you getting stronger, gaining muscle, losing fat. Oh, yeah. So, there is no tone. There is no like <laughs> you can go and just burn all this stuff away, spot burning. And like you can't just do glute exercises and get a big butt. No. Come and squat. You'll get it 10 times faster. I speak from experience. Oxfit and Ox 100 gave me my booty. Yeah. But it's, it's funny you say that, though, because the women in the challenge will show me a picture of what mm -hmm. they want to look like. And they're like, I want to look like this woman. And this woman in the in the picture, she is like. You can see her muscles. She looks really great. And they're like, I need to be that skinny. And I was like, well. But I don't want to gain weight. Right. And like, you're like, you right. don't understand how muscly this person is. Because <laughs> exactly. it's the only way to get toned. Yes. So th that person has muscle. When people say, I don't want to get bulky. There is no bulky. You're going to add muscle and lose fat. 
it, the person looks bulky because they've still got some fat. So like you want that muscle. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And a lot of that's body type. A lot of that is genetic, right? Yeah. But Ox 100 will get you the habits to get there. And a hundred days, we're going to get really close. Mm -hmm. Then we can set the next goal, the next hundred days, whatever it is. And like, that's what I'm excited about. I think, um, you know, like to be completely honest, we've been in a, I've got two children now under the age of like three and a half, whatever. So I've got a three year old and a one and a half year old. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm 17 pounds, probably overweight right now. Mm -hmm. We've gone through a cycle where I was like, Oh, I just want to get strong. So my kids and all these things, these are the reasons in my mind why I'm, uh, 12, 15, whatever, 17, probably like 20 pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I could say like, well, it's bulk in season. I'm trying to get strong and I've got strong, not because I've been eating whatever the hell I want, but because I've been lifting heavier weights. Mm -hmm. And, um, I know that the, they're all excuses. They're all valid excuses. Right. Anybody right. that's got kids, any dads that are listening to this, any moms that are listening to this, the fact that you're not exactly where you want to be, your kids and like you being exhausted is a valid excuse. And three years ago, I would have been like, that's a bullshit excuse. Right. <laughs> now I know it's a valid excuse because sometimes you get home and you just like, let me just eat whatever we've got. Mm -hmm. And then you're tired and then you need energy. So you just grab some sugar, you drinking energy drinks all the time you just got to get through the day mm -hmm. i've been mia's been in school now and leo's been in they've both been at the nest the nursery school now for together for like four months that's all that's the only time i've had to get back in a rhythm and a routine and i know that the only reason i'm 20 pounds overweight is because i've just been eating anything that i want because mm -hmm. i still train two hours a day yeah. I train exactly the same way I trained when I went to the bodybuilding competition. So nothing changed except eating whatever the hell I want. Mm -hmm. And I, from eating the way that Ox 100 and the habits that I established there, I got down to 165 and about eight to nine, maybe 10% body fat. Training exactly the way I train now. Eating whatever I want, I'm at 202 pounds and probably like 15 to 20% body fat, right? Right. So I know that it's all nutrition and I'm so excited to do this nutrition challenge and I'm so excited to get back on that. And I know that in a hundred days, if I just do the right thing, I will be where I want to be. Right. And I know that I want to take people on that journey with me. I want to take 20, 30, However many people sign up, I want to take them dads on that journey because it's so simple. Mm -hmm. It's just what you put in your mouth. And there's all these reasons, which are excuses, why I, I'm where I am now. And I know all I got to do is change it with Ox 100. Yeah. I mean, as an Ox 100 repeater, because yeah. I love going on this journey with everyone as well. It's like when we were training this past summer for ACC, mm -hmm. I'm eating exactly, you know, I was eating a certain way and I was, and I'm training exactly how I was training then, yep. but I am about 25 pounds heavier yeah. than I was. And that's because, you know, I've just been eating whatever I've, I wanted. And I don't have any kids. I really don't have any excuse. I've honestly just been lazy. Mm. And it makes such a huge difference. I can tell a difference in my sleep. I can tell a difference in my skin. I can, I mean, even when I am working out, I can tell a difference in my endurance and how heavy I'm lifting. Yeah, It really does make such a difference. When, it's funny how you've got all them excuses, right? Like, right. Because you're just gonna be like, well, I wanna get stronger. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. And I'll be like, same. I, well, I'm, I'm in a season where I'm, I'm just gonna get stronger. So it doesn't really matter what I eat, but it matters just as much. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, I'm busy and I'm around my kids or I've got this really high stress job. I understand all these reasons, but they're still wrong. Mm -hmm. Because if you flip it and you do this, you'll be better at all that stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I preach all the time about taking the time to meal prep, taking the time to go to the grocery store. And what have I done? 
been making excuses as to why I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm tired. I haven't really been, you know, off from work or I've been training a lot. So I just want to relax. Right. But then I'm not setting myself up for success. No, and it's, it shows. It's, it's exactly what you said. It's I'm busy and I'm doing all this stuff and I'm pursuing this stuff. So it doesn't matter, but it matters more. Mm -hmm. You'll be better. You'll be a better parent. You'll be a better employee. You'll, you'll get that promotion quicker because you'll have more energy. Yep. You'll everything in your life will get better because of this stuff. And I know that because looking at from the bodybuilding competition to now, that's a 40 pound swing. Mm hmm training exactly the same that's wild so if you if if you're a, if you're a man and you work out every day and you think that's enough it's not enough mm -hmm. and it, it it's not your fault because you've been told that the food and everything that you consume is healthy oh my god so now <laughs> look around the office most of them people that you work with do some form of exercise, mm -hmm. whether it's going for a walk, going to a spin class, going on their Peloton. Yoga, Pilates. Yoga. Everyone, do, we're, we do more exercise than we've ever done before, mm -hmm. right? But look around the office, look around when you go drop your kids off, everybody's overweight. Oh, yeah. But we're eating healthier than ever before. So something's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I know that because I'm in a gym and I get the luxury of training two hours a day and still from just eating an American diet, I'm gaining weight or I'm not, or I'm fluffy or I feel like shit, especially after the holidays. What yeah. have the holidays been? Just, hey, all them things that you feel like are treats, they just make you feel like hell. Oh yeah, there's right? nothing, every time I come back from a holiday and you know this, you always say, oh, you ate like shit the whole weekend. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you know I did, I just overate and wasn't eating, and I'm not saying that I was restricting myself by any means, but did I have more milkshakes than I normally do? Well, you do? just know yes. what works for you. Right. So to then do the opposite, mm -hmm. and then you come in and you try and work out, and you can't even get going. No, not you at all. You know why? Yeah. I know why I'm so sore this week. I'm not sore because I'm out of shape after four days off. No. But I'm sore because everything's inflamed. That's me today. All my joints are angry because I've just been eating and drinking whatever I want. So all my joints are like, you think you can just show up and do this after fueling yourself like that? Mm -hmm. What do you think your metabolism is doing right now? <laughs> we call it metabolic conditioning. Yeah. You've just unconditioned your whole system. Mm -hmm. Then you want to come in and work out. And so like, just try this. If you have, if you want, what are you running at right now? What am I Percentage running? wise. At what, like in the a gym? No, just if I said, what is Caitlin running at percentage? Oh, right, right now? Yeah. Oh, 65, maybe 70%. I think I I'm feel at awful. 25 to 30, honestly. And I think I've been at 25 to 30% for a year and a half mm -hmm. since Mia was born. And it was just like, okay, meal train. So people start dropping off pasta. They start dro You just got to eat it because what are you going to do? Go to the grocery store? You haven't slept. <laughs> so then that leads into a year and a half of just, mm -hmm. okay, well, pasta again, I guess. Or no, it doesn't work for me. I know it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Done it for a year and a half. So now I get to the end of the year and I'm like, it was a great year. Did a lot of cool stuff, but I did it at 30%. Right. So in 2024, no more excuses. Kids are in daycare. Mm -hmm. I know what I need to do. I could run 100% for the whole year. What the hell can I achieve this year if I run at 100%? Right. If I achieved all that at 30%. When we did a lot. Did a lot, but I was at 30%. Mm-hmm. Now I got all this time. What can I achieve business wise? What can I achieve, you know, as a dad? How much can I be there for my kids? And then what physical things can I do? If I'm at a hundred percent, seventy percent more just by changing this stuff. And so like if that doesn't get you excited, you know, if you're listening to this and that doesn't get you excited, don't sign up. Yeah, don't but do if it. you feel like shit, <laughs> I'm running at twenty percent too, then sign up and let's do this because I want to feel 100%. That's why Ox Fit, that's why Ox 100 started. 100 days to 100% you. Yep. I'm sick of running at 20%. But what's crazy is, you know that you're running at that percentage. Most people don't even realize they're running at that percentage because they've been running at that rate for years. That's what they've been doing. So how do they even know yep. what they could be capable of and what their potential is? 
because they are, you know, they constantly eat bad. They go out and drink all the time. They party, they stay up late. They're maybe two or three days in the gym at the most. And it's like, you are limiting yourself. And if you actually opened up to your full potential, oh my God. Yeah. Imagine what could happen. Yeah. And we know you've got that drive because right. you come into the gym every day and we see you. Mm -hmm. We know that we can get you 70%, 50%, even 20% better yep. by just changing what you eat and a couple of your habits. So that's why we do it. That's why we love it. Um, I'm excited for I'm it. I'm really excited. And it's interesting. Um, there's a lot happening in the fitness world right now. Oh, yeah. Um, besides, I mean, besides the crazy things I keep seeing posted on social media, yeah. like I'm definitely not going to use a barbell while I do GHD sit-ups. You know, it's oh, all yeah. about clickbait. Well, one thing that I do want to go back to is what you said about um, some people don't know that they're running mm -hmm. at a lower percentage. And um, like when you think about what I've just done over the holidays and what most people have just done over the holidays, the way they've been eating and drinking, mm -hmm. you don't think about it like this because you're just used to it and culturally we're used to it. But what I've just done is led myself on a road that could get me to be type two diabetic mm. Mm. over the last two weeks. Yeah. If I kept doing what I just did, no doubt I'll be on insulin in a few months mm -hmm. because of how much sugar I've just been eating, like just sugar on top of sugar. Then drinking days in a row. Yeah. Just, oh, well, it's Christmas. And like, yeah, I don't, I don't judge anybody for that, but what are you leading yourself to? You're leading mm -hmm. yourself to potentially being an alcoholic or just drinking too much and just crushing your liver, yeah. right? Like just just messing yourself up. And I'm sure you've been eating all those processed foods, seed oils, all that junk. I haven't looked at any ingredients. <laughs> right? I try not to during the, yeah. during, I know I say it during the holidays, but it's almost like I'm in this vicious cycle of I'm training so hard all year long. I'm, you know, doing the triathlon, doing this competition. I ran a marathon and then it's like the holidays come around and I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to take a break. I gain all this weight and then I'm here to do Ox 100 again. Yeah. And it's like, I have to get myself out of that cycle yeah. because but, I keep putting myself there. But some of these people are on the edge of diabetes. They mm -hmm. just don't know it. They don't know why they're so tired. They don't know why they need to take a nap in the middle of the day. And it's because their insulin levels are all over the place mm -hmm. and they're exhausted and they're bouncing around from sugar craving to sugar craving. They just don't know it because they haven't felt the other side of that. And the other side of that is Sign up to this program. You'll have a headache for two days. Maybe three. Yeah, I would say maybe three. <laughs> and after that, you're going to see how you can feel. Mm -hmm. So you're on the edge. Some people are on the edge of like chronic disease, mm -hmm. being sick for the rest of their life, having to take a medication for the rest of their life, having to be going seeing doctors and getting blood tests, all this stuff. Just by changing their nutrition, they can fix that and they can feel better. In a few years' time, this podcast will get taken down. Oh, yeah. This Misinformation all the way. You won't be allowed to say this, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen people lose 50 to 100 pounds yes. changing what they eat. Mm -hmm. The mainstream narrative right now is that that's not real. That what I'm seeing is not true. That sugar's good for you. That fat's bad for you. That the only way you get type 2 diabetes is it's genetic. Right. And this will will get canceled for this, <laughs> like somewhere down the line. Cancel me. I don't care. This is not allowed. This, this information is misinformation because I'm not a qualified doctor, so I shouldn't be telling you this. But I've fucking seen it. Mm -hmm. So if I've seen it and I've done it and I've watched it happen and I've, I've seen people save their own life. Yes. Then I'm going to say that it's true. Mm -hmm. And... There's a bill right now in California, AB 796, that says it's athletic trainers need licenses, but it's a way for them to start coming in and regulating what we do. Mm -hmm. And what we do is tell somebody, hey, instead of eating all this sugar, try eating paleo or try eating a whole 30 or try eating carnivore and see what happens. That is going to be something that we're not allowed to do. That just blows my mind. It's coming. 
I know it's coming. <laughs> and, and I know why it's coming. Because there's drugs now mm -hmm. that make more money than eating a certain way. But it's all about, it's always all been about money. It's they're over here telling us that Lucky Charms are part of your balanced diet. But it's like... But like, insulin wasn't enough. Insulin, like you don't make <laughs> enough money off insulin that you need to get everybody on Ozempic. No, we don't need that drug. You mm -hmm. don't need these drugs. We can fix that. And this, I'm telling you right now, in a few years time, and people will agree with it because they'll just get brainwashed into it. We shouldn't be given this advice. We're at, we're at a point where chronic disease is at epidemic levels. Mm -hmm. And we know how to fix some of that. We know how to fix some of that. And yeah. it's just by changing what you eat. And we're going against what is the mainstream narrative. We will get canceled for this in a few years time. And I'm going to keep preaching this and I'm going to keep doing it. And I don't care what happens because I know that it's true. Just like we know and we knew for years, there are ways to make your immune system stronger. Yep. Exercise, diet, get out in the sun. A few years ago, you weren't allowed to say that. You get taken down for saying that because why? Well, we've got this other drug that'll make your immune system a lot better than your natural immune system. Yep. Take all these boosters so that you can be healthier. We know now that you change your nutrition, you won't have to take insulin, you won't have yep. to take Ozempic. We have a way to fix that naturally. Mm -hmm. And in a few years time, I'm telling you, this will be classed as misinformation and it's coming and we're going to fight it. Yeah. And we're not going to sit back and just be like, no, whether we have to put this episode on a different network or whatever it is, but they're coming for us because you, from our, from our fitness community, you don't make any money because mm -hmm. most of our people are not on any drugs. Yep. So we have no value in the marketplace, right? Cause you're not taking all these expensive drugs. You don't go see your doctor because you feel fine. You don't all, we're not part of this system. And uh, yeah, like we're telling you not to drink soda. We're telling you not to do all these things. And for some reason, we're going to be the scariest people in this whole system. Then label me a monster because I am frightening. Yeah. You know, and it's like you said. This is a sword that I'm willing to die on though. And that, that hasn't been many in my life where I've been like, I guess, like, I'm not going to fight that. But this one, I'm no, no chance. No chance are you going to keep telling me that this stuff is genetic. Right. When I know it's not. I'm telling you, Ox 100 has been changing lives. This last year alone, I watched someone who couldn't get pregnant get pregnant. I watched someone whose doctor told them they had diabetes go back three months later, 50 pounds less and not have diabetes. Tell me this isn't real. But if you want to go ahead and take some drugs and eat what they're labeling as healthy, then believe them. Go ahead. But if you're ready to make a change, then let's start right now. 100 days. Let's do it. Change Hell your yeah. habits and change your life. Dude. Yeah. This is what we're going to keep fighting for. And um, yeah, it, it's one of the things that it's not going to be popular to say, but it doesn't, it doesn't just change physically. It changes mentally. It, cha it, it can rescue you from all kinds of illnesses, right? We're in epidemic levels of people being unhappy and out of shape. Mm -hmm. This is what me and you are fighting for. And we can change it with what? A couple of hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. A couple of hundred bucks. You know how much all the other stuff costs in the <laughs> medical system? For you to fix this stuff, fix this stuff. Right. It, it's thousands. It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Some of these visits. surgeries yes. are hundreds. Of, give me a hundred days. Because they want instant gratification. I'm going to get this liposuction now. I'm going to have this surgery right now because I'm going to see results right now. Mm -hmm. But instead of doing the work and making the change, and yes, it may take a hundred days, but then your life has changed forever. Yeah, it's like when we, me and Lucas were talking about this the other day. If you win the lottery, mm -hmm. you are happy for a couple of days. And then guess what happens? Your happiness goes right back to where it was mm -hmm. before you won the lottery. This is like you go get liposuction, you go get whatever these surgeries are. You're going to feel good 
You don't mm-hmm. feel like you won the lottery, but you didn't get to go on the journey. Right. Right. And that journey is where all the good stuff happens. Mm-hmm. That's where you get to find out who you are and all the changes happen. And that's where all the magic happens is on the journey from day one to day 100. And then beyond that, where we take it beyond that. So, yeah, man, sign up. Um, 100 days, we can change your life. We're excited about it. I am um, pumped. But you know what I'm excited about the most is like, for me, it's not going to be 100 days. It's going to be a whole year. Right. I'm going to do this for a whole year. And I've never done it for a whole year. I've done it mm-hmm. for six months to lead yeah. up to a competition. Mm-hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna eat this way. And I'm committing to saying this on this podcast. And I'm not saying it to give myself a dopamine rush. I'm saying it because I've written it down that this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to commit and see what happens after a whole year of eating this way and live in this way and just being a hundred percent for a whole year right and it's like you said all the things we did not at a hundred percent i said 2023 was amazing but 2024 is about to be epic and i want to see as many people as i can along for the journey mm-hmm. we had a lot of people last year push themselves do hard things let's double let's triple that yeah and I mean, that gets me more excited than my own successes. Yeah, I know what works for me, but letting me help you figure out what works for you and change your life, Yeah, there's no feeling better than that. Yeah, and the beautiful thing about Ox 100, the last thing that I'm gonna close with is, it just makes you take ownership mm-hmm. of your life. And all the things that are affecting you are just excuses and reasons, and they're, they're all just bullshit. Ox 100 helps you say, if I control all these things, I'm going to have a great year. And so we'll list them out and we'll control them and we'll go for them and we'll fucking crush it. We just get you out of your own way. Yeah. So how do people sign up? So to sign up, people right now, I've got a link on my Instagram. You can go straight through the website. You can email me. How many people are you taking? So right now I'm taking 20 people. Okay. And I already have 12 spots filled. Wow. So there's eight spots so left. So there's eight spots left. Okay. That's awesome. So I'm, let's go. Let's yeah, do this. You better hurry up. If you listen to this, you're almost too late. I know, right? Yeah. Don't be the last one left. No. Come on this journey with us. Let's see where we can get. I'm ready for this. I'm ready to watch you. I really enjoyed this podcast. Thank you. Yeah. I um, loved being in the new studio. It looks so great. Yeah. You're in the hot seat. I am. I know. I even asked you. I was like, this you is my sure spot. you don't want to be in the other seat? Oh, no, this is my spot. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm really excited for this year. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff happening and we do. yeah, I'm really excited to start feeling better. I know. Same. You know, I'm, and if I'm, you are too, come on, let's do it together. Cause I don't want to do it on my own. I, I want, I want a group of other people that we can go on it together. You know, everything that I've accomplished over the last couple years here at Oxford has not been alone. Never. It's been with my team and all these athletes in this gym. Yeah. That's what pushes me. Yeah. I could never accomplish what I've done on my own, period. Yeah. Put it on my grave. Yeah. (laughs) I just don't want to. No. I just don't want to do it on my own. Like, I applaud the people that can do those things on your own, but you are missing out Mm. on being surrounded by people just like you. Yeah. All right, dude. I enjoyed that one. Thank you. Episode 20. Man, one away. One away. (laughs) One away from being in the top 1%. Let's go. All right, guys. I'll see you in the gym. See you in the... This is the new year. Happy new year. Yeah. And uh, love you guys. Bye. Find your strength.